Okay. Hello, everyone, Hi. and welcome to the first Jessie-less Shelf Space Book Club uh, live show. And this is going to be on uh, Shadow of the Gods, Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn, book one of the Bloodsworn trilogy. Oh, I have mine here, too. Um, in case you guys are unaware, I have been up since 5.30 this morning reading the last 300 pages of this book. Due to poor time management, I was not done last night when I went to bed. And so I had to read. I've read 300 pages and it's not even noon. So, but I did finish it 20 minutes before the show started. I did manage to finish it. I will do better in the future as I try to juggle all these things. Your memories going to be very fresh then. Yes, I know. I know. Um, I, I still can't remember these people's names. There are too many people who have similar sounding names. So, but with us today, we have Abby from the channel, Abby Salter. If you do not know Abby, she is currently the captain of Team Poseidon. Is that right? Yep. Um, one of the second or below place winners of this month's uh, Olympic Readathon. And you if you're not the you should be. What? No. You mean the Zeus has the first slot. So it's just, it, I mean, it's adorable watching all you guys fight for second place. So um, this, yes, <laughs> you're right, Sam. I was too busy, too busy doing foolishness. Um, we'll talk about this, this guide thing in a second. So everyone here, um, we're going to talk non-spoilers for just a few minutes. But first of all, what did everyone give? What did everyone give? What's what's the star rating that everyone gave um, Shadow of the Gods? Abby, what did you give it? I gave it a 4.5 stars. Gotcha. So. I, yeah, I think I gave it I gave it a four star. Um, I think I'm going to end up with a four star. It was uh, – I did not – I I like Faithful in the Fallen better. But again, that's a complete series. Uh, but I did like um, – Malice. Sorry, Big Klaus's comment. Klaus hasn't read it. Klaus hasn't read it. He's just he just is a Gwyn hater. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Oh, nice. Darren gave it five. Angela four and a half. Lisa with five. Uh, Sam with five at, at, until the until the four until the ending. I get that. Yeah. Nymeria. Uh, oh, sorry, Melly here with five. Um, yeah, I gave it. I. Uh, Vikings is not my favorite thing. Uh, we'll talk about that, but I think I, I gave it. I give it four stars um, when all said and done. Uh, the ending, which we'll talk about, was quite quite good. I think. I think the ending, those last like fifty he pages, like, he stuck the ending. <laughs> yeah, were some of the strongest. So, Abby, what are your kind of like non spoiler um, impressions of the book before we get into kind of spoiler talk? Well, it's interesting for me having read all of John Gwynn's books and sort yeah. of going in with being a John Gwynn fan, I'd say, and like knowing what he does and what he does best. Um, and I'd say I have some biases probably towards the Banished Lands because I've read all the books in that series. Yeah. And so I have such an attachment to those characters. And so it's in some ways a little bit hard for me to like detach from the Banished Lands because I'm like, I love them so much. So, but it is definitely great to go into a new world, a new series. I have never read like a Viking or like this heavily inspired Viking Icelandic sagas type fantasy story before. So a lot of it was like, oh, this is all very new for my brain. Yeah. Um, um, I'd say that's quite common for quite a few of us here. Yeah, I, I get that. Uh, Cheyenne, four stars. Um, uh, Angela uh, agrees that uh, Faithful and Fallen, she likes it better just because it's complete. And um, I do agree that I think his writing is excellent in this mm. in this book. Lisa, this is her first Gwyn book. Is anyone else here? Is this is this anyone else's first Gwyn book? Because um, again, Abby's read all of all of his uh, discography, if you will. Um, and I've read The Faithful and the Fallen. I have not yet read um, the second trilogy in the Banished Lands, but. Uh, uh, speaking of the the Viking stuff, I also have never read something this heavily Norse inspired, um, and I I know why because Philip Chase says he has an Oxford um, Oxford Norse to English dictionary or whatever. Uh, I had to use a a link that filled in some of the kind of vocabulary, the glossary, 
because he does not pull any punches. At no point does he explain some of the things are explained, like mm -hmm. the difference between a Gulderman and a Sadwitch, Sadwitch, Sadwitch. Yeah. But like the warrior stuff, I like I forget all the words, the driz, drizine or the drekas and the snekas and all of these other things. I don't know what these and the and the hungamunga, the <laughs> The Hrum, Hrum, Hrum Ganga, I think it's a cold. Man, Abby, like, did you have any trouble getting into it because of all the, the... There was like this, like, okay, I've got to get my brain into gear. Uh, okay. uh, and I'd say that's common for Gwyn books. Like, the mal Malice as a whole in the beginning was a bit like, you've got a lot to get your head around. It's a different yeah. way. It's like, Malice is the characters. You've got a lot of characters to get your head around, whereas this is more of the world that you've got to get your head around. Um, but I do think slightly differently that it's his best written book that yeah. uh you can definitely tell how he has improved as an author and see how his craft is has improved like you can see how he's taken like the criticisms that he might have received from his first series and worked yeah. upon it here specifically to do with like the description of characters um and like the description as a whole were a lot more poetic i'd say than the quite direct writing of the faith and the fallen yeah I, I mean, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, we got a bunch of people who this is first Gwen. Look at that first Gwen. Darren, I'm going to talk about this in a second. Um, uh, it could be a good gateway book into, I mean, provided you're okay. There's, it's heavily terminology at the beginning. Uh, Klaus, Klaus, you might like this. Like it is, there is so much Norse mythology up in this beast. Like it is ridiculous. I think um, based on Klaus's criticisms of Malice, I think he'd like it more. Yeah, I, I definitely think he would like it more. I'm not sure if he would like it uh, completely. Um, someone who is who thinks Harry's parents is OTP, James X Lily here. Uh, first, <laughs> first Gwen, nice. Pete loved it. Man, so like this is a really popular book. Like it has, I have heard really no one talk negatively about this book. Maybe did Jimmy like this book less? Maybe that's not him. I, I don't know. I, I saw someone who had some criticisms about this book. Um, but first Gwen book for Pete. First Gwen book, five stars. Man. No, I agree. I agree, Ariel. It does. But at the beginning, it is just, I was just like, <laughs> I was clueless. So, you did not find, did, were you struggling to find your feet? Were you, were you still crawling, Alan? It was just like, there was so much. And I had heard there was a lot, and I'm like, I'll be fine. And then I was like, no, I am not fine. What are all these freaking terminologies? So I also think that, what going back to Darren's point above about there being more creatures in this, this book, um, I know you haven't, you have an Abby, but for those of you who have played The Witcher, did this book feel like The Witcher 3 to you guys? Like just with all like the description of the creatures and the terrifying trolls, they reminded me kind of like of the Leshen in that. It, and then the Viking place in The Witcher 3, Skellige. This whole book felt like I was playing The Witcher 3, which I really did enjoy um, for those of you who have played it. Uh, chime in if you've played The Witcher 3, those of you. Just because the there was there were like monsters at every turn, like they're walking, like every chapter had like oh we're having a picnic, Blah! tooth stealing tenor pop up and what? Like from the very like second chapter with his incredibly graphic description of the trolls' testicles hanging down like pendulums, like a perpetual motion. Uh, thing that sits on people's desks. I'm just like gross. <laughs> I definitely say that there are in. I'd say John Gwyn, Gwyn books as a whole. There are creatures that you would love to meet, and there are creatures that you would never want to set eyes upon. Nice. Yeah. Oh no, I I agree with you. But like, especially compared to Faithful and the Fallen, there are so many monsters in this book. Like, the Banished Lands feel much safer. Mm, I'd say grimmer. Yeah, like as a general rule, the Banished Lands seem like all like pretty civilized, while Vig, 
Vigrud. What guys, what's that D? Why is there a cross on the D? Like oh like do it, you pronounce that differently or do you is it just pronounced like a D, but it's just got a little cross on the tail? I'm not too sure on how you pronounce it. Um, but like yeah, Pete, but there's so many monsters in in uh in this book. Oh, the frost spiders. Oh, anyone who doesn't like spiders, correct. I hate spiders. Oh, the night worms. I oh. worms. That, that, I mean, I don't know if we're getting into that because that's like chapter 14, but that scene. Yeah. But the night worms are big nope. Like we're not talking, to, we're not giving context for them, but like I think we can talk about the monsters in general. Okay, so hold on. So Cheyenne says the audiobook pronounced the D with the little cross as a th. So Vigrith, Vigrith, I guess is the name of the world. Yeah. But yeah, doesn't it seem much more dangerous, Abby? Like, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to, to live there. Definitely not. It's like everyone, and and I liked how the danger and the horror of this place, everyone's kind of, like, no one's super surprised when, like, a like, monster they're, like, appears. they're just like, it sucks to live here. Battle planes are dangerous. So, I don't yeah, know. This happens. Uh, you go out for a walk and you come across these things. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Like, the first time... uh you know, Orca walks out to the stream behind her farm and just talks to the scorpion thing with the human face. <laughs> I was like, what? What is that thing called? A, 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 a skirt? 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 Uh, I don't know what any of these things are called, Abby. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, just, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just weird. Um, but do you have any other like kind of non-spoiler like impressions before we talk into all of the many spoilers we can talk about? Um, I feel like I had something, but it's gone from my brain now. Um, this book made me hungry uh, for porridge. There, I, I, I really uh, wanted to eat porridge after after reading this book. The the freaking uh, extensive discussion, like. I felt this was a very grounded book as far as like setting wise. Like I felt very connected to the setting in this mm. book. Um, maybe because it's just more specific than, you know, general European, you know what I mean? But like just the description of like all the kits and like, you know, the seal leather and like all of the material everything's made out of and the wa waddle and daub. I love Waddle and Daub is one of my favorite kinds of houses. Um, but then the food, the nasty like herring stuff and the freaking porridge and their nasty food they're always eating. I've remembered what I was thinking about before to talk about was the uh, bones of the dead gods and like how the city is formed yes. out of the skull of a dead god and you can have the mountain range or whatever that's made out of the snake like that is just so cool oh. like the imagery of that and like that has the the magical thing is just i found that really cool yeah that's actually my, the lore of this world and like the fact that it's built literally on the bones of these dead animal gods was my favorite part of the book like i love the fact that you know there's a city in the you know Go. in the snake head the snake skull and you know, one has the bones of the eagle on on either side of it. Like, that, I mean, that just that is so cool. how large they are as well. Like, to have a city in the head, like that must be oh. huge. Yeah, one hundred percent. Ariel here with yeah, the the it's so it's so freaking cool. Pete with uh, agreeing with you here. The imagery was freaking really really cool. That was my favorite part. The um, uh, the lore. And then, oh, spurt. That's the skeleton, spurt. And then the Froa spirits, so like the tree things. Yeah. So there's a lot of cool different laws like interwoven throughout, like with yeah. the magical creatures, with the Froa spirits, with the Classic. different witches and these gods and how they've all come together in this world. Yeah. Like I no, said, I, I, more, I, more magical than the Faithful and the Fallen. Yeah. It definitely feels, it definitely feels more kind of mystical. 
uh, mm -hmm. than Faithful and the Fallen. It, it all feels very. Um, Eddie Izzard had a had a thing uh, a, a bit where he was talking about Stonehenge and that when you go to Stonehenge, it's a very kind of like it's a very kind of mystical place. You kind of feel the ah uh, as opposed I'm to like never been to Stonehenge. Oh, well, I but that's what this book felt like. I always use that to describe like when something feels very like oh like very mystical instead of you know like the whole thing feels i don't know it just feels very mythological to yeah, me yeah. um so oh hold on the use of the dead bones dead god's bones uh, uh the history was important i agree i agree the biggest yes uh then there was there was stick hinge and straw hinge and then a big bad wolf came and blew it down um anyway <laughs> Sam's the, yeah. Sam, stop yeah, it. Yeah. Stop. Is, also, is it really off the interstate? Is Stonehenge yeah, really off the... Yeah, and you can't go... Okay, only at two times of the year can you go up to the stones, and that's at um, the solstice. You can go at the summer solstice and the winter solstice. Otherwise, they're completely roped off and you can't get anywhere near them. That's because of useless tourists. Like... Four years ago, when I went to Rome, you could walk right up to the freaking arches in uh, um, the Arch of Titus and the Arch of Constantine right there by the Colosseum. You can't now. It's fenced off. You have to look at it from behind a fence because people won't stop putting their gum on ancient relics. If you're in the chat and you're a douchebag that puts gum on ancient relics, you should be ashamed of yourself. And we're going to bury you with the dead gods. So... <laughs> I cannot believe that Stonehenge, you can see Stonehenge from the interstate. That kind of spoils a lot of the mysticism. Yeah, then when you described the mysticism, it was like, well, the motorway. Well, that room, I'm, I, I, I just, that knowledge just went out. It's Stonehenge is in the middle of a, in the, in the middle of a druidic forest to me, uh, where the chimney sweeps go and scrub it clean every, every week or something. So. Okay. You live in Victorian England, remember? So, yeah. So anyway, head right now. That's not a helicopter. That is, I don't know what that is. It's a dirigible. It's a dirigible. It's an. <laughs> Abby, stop ruining it for me. Anyway, right. let's talk about. Let's talk about. Uh, we're going to go into spoilers. So if you don't, if you haven't read this book, um, we're going to spoil it, it for you. Yeah. So what I want the what I want the commenters, uh, everybody watching. I want to know your opinions, but I'm going to ask Abby, what is the order of your favorite storylines in this book? Like, so we have three. We've got Varg, Elvar, and uh, Orca. So what order is your favorite in here? Like, what is what is the order of, the, of your preference? Like, because I know that Sam liked Varg the best by a lot, and then Orca, and then he said Elvar is like a distant third uh, when I talked to him earlier today. Uh, and the thing is, I know that so many people are going to have Orca first. That's the I popular one. In my bones. I think, and the thing is, I've been thinking about this, but then I've never really been coming to a conclusion because I liked them all, I'd say. Uh, yeah. But... Oh, Nymeria just, here with with uh, Orca, then Varg, then Elvar. Oh. So I'm Lisa sorry, I'm sorry. Mark, wow. Elvar, and Orca. That's fine, Abby. While you're thinking, I'll go ahead and put in mine. I agree with Lisa. I think Orca, while she wasn't my least favorite character, I think I liked her story. I was least interested in her storyline, especially considering it had no conclusion. Like, I mean, I did like the the very end of the book, but I mean, I didn't, I don't know. I wasn't that invested in what was going on with her. So Varg, I think was my favorite, very close. And then Elvar and then Orca. Here, I Pete with the hot take is Elvar is first. Nice. What do you think, I, Abby? I mean, I'm thinking that I might be, it's gonna be Varg and Elvar are the ones that are battling for the first place. Nice. Um, but I don't know which one's on the top. So uh, so are you putting Orca third also? Wow. So, all right. So we got, we have some pretty similar opinions on that then. Um, Antonia liked Orca the best than Varg. Um, I agree. I, th I liked what Elvar's storyline about the, the, first of all, can we talk about how confusing it was for me to go back and forth to try to keep in, to keep in my headspace 
the difference between Elvar and Varg's storylines. You missed a great uh, moment where you could have said your thought cage. <sighs> Must we? Must we say <laughs> our <laughs> thought cage? You keep them straight in your thought cage, Alan. Okay, so at first I thought, I was like, why are they saying thought cage? And then I was like, okay, this is going to be like Sherlock's memory palace or something. No, it's just brain. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they keep saying thought cage? Does it did that bother anyone else in here? Like I think people were talking about it in the in the chat, but I didn't get to engage in the in the shelf space discord because you know I was just finishing it. But like I did miss an opportunity, Abby, to talk you about it. You really game. did. I was like, oh, he's not said it. It was hard for me to keep track of in my thought cage the difference between the battle grims and the blood sworn. I would agree with that. But I did like the fact that Elvar and Agnar were like seeking that kind of like battle glory and seeking the the realm of the gods. I thought that was that was um that was really cool. I, I, would, have liked, I would have liked a uh, character list to, so I could keep all of the Bloodsworn and the Battlegrim straight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it was I was very confused. Hold on, let's see what else people are saying. <laughs> There's look at Sam. <laughs> Um, Varg, about the same. I agree. I agree. I think I like Orca better than Elvar as a character, but I liked uh, Elvar's story better. Varg, Elvar, Orca. Nice. Varg, Orca, Elvar. Maybe all the extreme Orca lovers were just very loud. <laughs> yeah. Well, every like every review I've seen, like Petra, yeah. you know, loves Orca. Um, yeah. I think Orca one of his new favorite characters in fantasy. Um, Varg's, yeah, his slow start was, yeah, it was very, I very slow. I think he had a slow start. I thought he was straight in. I was I like, like straight invested with Varg. Really? I didn't like Varg till later. Um, I liked Orca. I liked Orca early. And then her and Varg kind of swapped places. And then Elvar was just kind of here in the middle. Um, speaking of Varg's storyline... I love I love the other Bloodsworn though. Like I love Einar's I like bread or whatever his line is. And I love how much Svik loves cheese. cheese. And I love how John Gwynn said that Svik is based off of Ed, I think he said. Oh really? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, like, that's inspiration from him. <laughs> that's I wonder oh, if I Ed I loves he's cheese. eating lots of cheese now. I wonder if Ed loves cheese. Um Nice. There's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, impressions here. Yeah, I um, I did. I had no idea what was going to happen. Like when I saw that Varg was the last chapter, I'm like, okay, so are we just not going to get a? I, I um, was like, where's the rest of Orca? Cheyenne, they you no. Know, he says he says it too much. It's too much with the thought cage. Thought cage, thought cage, thought cage. <laughs> um, so the the consensus is that it um, there's too much thought cage, even though it's cool. Svik is the favorite character. Who's your favorite character, Abby? I mean, it was hard enough picking which one was my like the best POV. I don't know. I, I agree. I think I have I have difficulty. Um, I do like. I think the Blood Sworn are my favorite. Uh, group of folks. Um, I liked Agnar a lot before. Before the end. Yeah. Um, but I love I, that story with Svik, with the cheese and the troll. I love, like, how much of that story is true? <laughs> like, when Svik's talking about that and he made the troll, like, cut his belly, I don't, no one believes you, Svik. I don't believe him. But. But it was funny. It was it was hilarious. I loved that chapter. I think um, James X Lily is right here. I think I went in too hyped for Orca mm. because of uh, all of the the hype. I agree. Orca is awesome. She reminds me a lot of because you read Kaigen too, didn't you, Abby? Yeah, sort of Kaigen. She does this, remind me of Misaki. And but same. the thing is with Orca's storyline is that. As soon as we met her, I was like, the husband's going to die. The boy's going to get kidnapped. Straight oh, really? away. 
straight away. I was like, when's oh, it going to happen? The first chapter when the, when the kid got snatched. When, um, yeah. and, and then I was like, it's going to, straight away, I was like, he's scared and the boy's going. And then I was just waiting for it to happen. And then when it happened, I was like, okay, right. And, and now we continue on. Gotcha. I thought the kid was going to die. Um, I thought, like, I, I knew the husband was going to die, but I thought the kid was going to die too. And she was just going to go on, like, you know, this revenge blood page, carving a, um, a swath across um, the battlelands. A lot of people like Royka, or however you pronounce it, because it's got that O with the cross in it. Einar, I'm, I'm not half troll. I'm big bone. Did we ever figure out? Okay, so hold on. The found family in Bloodsworn. Let's let us break down the POVs. All right. Let's talk about Varg. All right. Yes. So, did you see it coming? The twist that they were all tainted. I didn't see it coming. I did not no. either, Abby. Like, what did you think of that? I, I mean, I like it as a twist. I was like. Oh, yeah, I like that. Like finding out that they were all descended from different gods. I was like, yes. Yeah, I th I kind of got the feeling that Varg was just because of uh, the know, they, the metaphors and the similes that they used to describe him. Yeah, but I did not know that everyone was, and I mm -hmm. I thought that was so cool when they're just like, yeah. So by the way, we're all freaking tainted. Do you? Who do you think Einar's descended from? They never said. Um, I'm trying to think what the, all the gods were. Uh, yeah, I'm they not sure. some. Because, like, there was a badger that I didn't even know about. They mentioned the badger one time when they're talking about the smith, right? So, I don't know. I also didn't yeah. know there was a fox till Svix said it. Because, what's his name? The Betrayer. He was, what was he from? He was the rat. He is in the, he, that, that he's in the Battlegram. He's the different storyline. He's in the. Um, oh, he's, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I was getting, getting ahead of myself. The exact same thing happened to me, Abby, while reading this. Like, trying to keep the Bloodsworn and the Battlegram, like, straight especially since um Bior, the the rat guy is also a tainted so like yeah. i was like wait is he a the exact same thing happened to me the exact mm -hmm. same thing um yeah he was descended from the freaking rat the betrayer the peter pettigrew of the freaking um story oh check this out look at this tankebor thought cage is something they say in norway that's yeah. super cool. that, 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 that would be the reasoning behind it. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. So I'm trying. These comments are going so fast, Abby. Um, what what did they spoil for you, Cheyenne, of the storyline? Yeah, Angela agrees, yeah. Abby, yeah. with the the kidnapping and thing. Um, but so Varg and the battles and and the uh, Bloodsworn. I can't keep them straight. I cannot keep them straight. So, did you like Varg? What did you think of, like, their storyline in general? Like, working for... They're working for the... They're yes. the ones yes. who fought with the Prince of the Southern Kingdom. Yes. yes. They're working for the Queen. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And I I really liked Varg, and I liked him from the beginning and seeing his motivations. Uh, and I liked how he had this conflict within himself where he wants to seek revenge for his sister's murder. And he's got this plot in his head where he's like, I need to seek revenge. I need to do this. I need to find a sword witch, or have you say it, um, and have this ritual so I can know her final moments and figure out what happened. And then he's confronted with being part of the Bloodsworn and realizing that he's making friends and he's developing relationships and I found family and that's all coming together. And But he's still battling with this, I want to seek revenge on my sister, uh, on, on my sister's death. And him trying to balance that with living his life and that conflict of interest there. Yeah, did you think he was going to go uh, go with, was a guy named Skulk? Skulk? 
whatever the guy's name is, Skulk. I, I, I could see it happening, and then I'm really glad that it didn't. Yeah, me too. I was like, man, don't betray these people. Come on, bro. Skulk, that's his name, yeah. Um, what do you... Because John Gwynn, especially with the way all this wrapped up, like where everyone is kind of connected, and that's one of the things that kind of confused me is the geography of this place. Mm -hmm. Because we would see someone here, and then all of a sudden they'd be over here with this other storyline that I thought was way farther away. And so I just got very confused. But do you think the person that killed... One, do you think his sister is dead? Two, if she is... Do you think we have we have met the person who killed her? I think we, would, we will know who the murderer is. I think we've met her. Yeah, so you think we've met the person who, is, yeah. who has killed her? Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, I do the same, Angela. I, I agree, Abby. I think we have met them. I, I want to say it's like the only... Who they sell it to? Maybe the prince, the queen, maybe Queen Helka, maybe. I just I don't know because of I don't know if they would have had a motive for killing his sister. Like, yeah, like well, like maybe she's not dead. Maybe they just they just bought her because she's a maybe she's a satyr witch. Um, since she's she's tainted, like um, you know, if it's yeah, like Varg. So maybe she's she's a satyr witch. And that's yeah. why they kidnapped her for some reason. Oh, look at look at this thought. She's not dead, but someone's figured out a way to purify the blood of the tainted. That'd be weird. We're going to talk about the Raven people in just a second. We talk about Elvar. Um, Sam here being like, <laughs> it's Rage of Dragons all over again. I I said that in the chat. I did say that in the chat because... This is a big dragon, which makes you it implies that there's going to be dragons in it. Yeah, and there isn't a dragon scene until like the last what twenty pages of the book. Yeah. So maybe if this was the cover of like the second book, I'd be okay with it. But I think this yeah. is false advertising for a dragon book. I think it's not only false advertising; it's also a spoiler. It's I, a massive. Yeah, like because Lick Fear is on the cover, I knew they were going to free Lick Fear. Like. You yeah. and, and you know, and the thing is, I think this is a theme for Orbit because Rage of Dragons. Yeah, well, we, and I yeah, think they, they had they, another one as well with with dragon the bone ships again another dragon book without that many dragons in it. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, That's my so, okay. oh, no. <laughs> so uh, Angela glad Varg didn't portray the Bloodsworn. Angela agrees with you. Varg is the most developed character because of the eternal con internal conflict. Yeah. Um, uh, I was of the, I liked the Bloodsworn the best, but I think that plot line was resolved the kind of least because Skulk just like, he didn't find anything what happened to his sister. I guess, I guess his arc in this one is to kind of, you know, realize that he's one of the blood sworn to be okay with the fact that he's one of the tainted and to kind of find his, his new family. And so now he's, I mean, he's got to hunt down Skulk because Skulk has the, the lock of her hair. Yeah. Um, Torvik. I know Ariel when Torvik bites it. That was so sad. I like just I, after I was like, what? No. Yeah, I know. Oh, I hated that. Um, Varg was likable as time went on. Mm -hmm. Um, oh yeah, Cheyenne, that is, yeah, that's pretty much a, that's a, spoiler. <laughs> that's a spoiler for, uh, for her thing. I, I had heard that also. So, um, Einar probably descended from a bull. So let's talk about Orca since everyone is, uh, talking about Orca storyline and how it was spoiled and everything. And I mean, I, tip, I, I think it was also pretty, uh, one, overhyped, two, obvious that, you know, I thought, I thought the kid was going to die, but I mean, you definitely knew the husband was going to die and that she was going to mm -hmm. go on a revenge thing. I thought there were going to be way more bodies. The way everyone was talking about it, like I thought she was going to carve a bloody murder canyon across the, you know. I do like that her plan is always 
kill everybody but one. <laughs> I, yeah. I love when yeah. Ward's like, is like, is that always your plan? I, I'm, I feel like that's your plan all the time. So I did like her, her like scenes with the brothers and like them rowing the boat. And then they get to the bit which has, um, I can't remember what creature it was in the river. The, uh, the oh, scene the, in the river. The Nakin, the Narakin or something. The Nakrin, Nakrin. Which um, is, and then, like, their relationship. Yeah. Uh, it's um, called a Nixie. And then, how, and then how she does have, like, she does have some, she does kill quite a few people. I mean, and she's yeah, very I mean, comfortable that's, doing it. That, that's true. She killed five of 12 when she was fighting. And then we saw afterwards, like, I loved the last page where the blood oh, swarms yeah. show up and Orca has murdered everyone, everyone. in Grimholt or whatever, except yeah. for the kids. And the kids are all around her and they're not frightened of her at all. Yeah. She's safe. And so, she, and then you find out that she's that that Thorkel is skull splitter. He did not, in fact, drown by falling in the water with his armor on. So, what gr gr what is the name of the head of the freaking blood sworn? Groin gr gr Grinder. These people's names. You know what I'm talking about? The head of the blood the blood sworn. It's yeah. Oh, skull splitter was his brother. Um, mm. And so, I guess they must have just said he's, he's gone, he's dead because we want to. He wants to live yeah. his life. Yeah, glor glor are glor we clear? Are we clear that it's his brother? Are we clear that Skull Spitter is not Orca herself? Are we clear that he's male? Oh, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, but part of me was wondering if they defined their gender. Oh yeah, I think it is because. It said that earlier that Skull Splitter was his brother. And okay. then at the very last page, he says Orca Skull Splitter and then asks about his brother. And she says, okay. um, he's dead. And they took, like, they killed him and took our kids. So I think, yeah, Skull Splitter was the former head of the, of the Blood Sworn. Yeah. And I, I, was and I, think, like, I, I wasn't sure if the gender was confirmed, but if it was. And I think, then. like you said, he decided that he wants to live a normal life, but what kind of tainted are, are Orca and Thorkel? Like, I mean, Thorkel, to... Thorkel, it's more like talked about that he is uh, tainted, like yeah. you sort of knew, but you, it wasn't really explained about Orca being tainted. There were some moments where you're like, oh, is she? But and then, then that means what's their son? Because that he's going to be a combination. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, oh, like we, and Angela saying, Orca is bear, Orca is wolf. Oh, did they say that? I I must have missed that. But that's uh, that's awesome. I mean, it's less awesome that two of our main characters are wolf. John Gwen is obsessed with wolves. Uh, let's just go ahead and get that out there. <laughs> um, yeah, Thor. Okay, so Thorkel is the berserker. That makes sense considering his brother. Uh, Glornir is 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 berserker. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and he's so definitely taking that. Son right. is going to be a wolf bear. That's that's freaking awesome. Um, hold on. Um, hold on. I thought she just. I thought she took his last name because he like his last name was Skull Splitter because. He says that Skull Splitter's his brother. I don't know. It's all very confusing. Yeah, they do say Skull Splitter's male. Hold on. Hold on. So many people are talking about Orca. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, talking about the sister. Okay. Seder witches are descended from the snake. Oh, my gosh. These live shows, they're awesome, but there's so many, so many comments. So let's go through these. Many people expected more dragons, Abby. Um, yeah, the cover's not a scene in the book. I agree, Cheyenne. Um, no, they do mention that the dragon is imprisoned, but it would not be so obvious that the dragon was going to be freed in this particular book, if not for, I mean, I think you can kind of predict that it's going to be freed, but it might be in a different, uh, different book. 
The troll story, a couple people have said it's based on an actual fairy tale, which is awesome. Oh, okay, that's cool. Um, um, people like the twist. Did you like when Mord and uh, Lif rode in and saved Orca? Yeah. I mean, I love the here come the cavalry trope. Oh, yeah, I agree. And I, <laughs> at first I was like, who are these doofuses traveling with Orca? But I ended up liking them. They're so... Oh, I love them. They're so doofy. <laughs> um, yeah, the imagery at the end was awesome. Yeah, so, so freaking cool. That last scene was awesome. Um... I wish, Patrick, I wish that Orca was an Orca. Like, if her freaking, if she, her tainted was an Orca, that would be so freaking cool. Um, so, this is possible, except that she's in the, her city is in the bones of the eagle. So, I mean, I think she might be an eagle tainted. But I don't think she can be the eagle because the bones are there. I also want a wolf bear. I saw, okay, slight sidetrack, but Go ahead. I, I went to the park earlier and there was this massive dog. And I was like, that's a wolven. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, it really was. I was like, if anything that's, if anything's a wolven, that's a wolven. I wish I'd managed to get a picture of it. That's awesome. Um, we, Mord is dead because Mord mm. was stabbed by, um, Glid people. Glidden, that dumb freaking, it okay, one thing that bothers me about this book, there are two Hormgangas, both Hormgangas are one, and then the victor is killed, like, you, <laughs> it was not very well established that these are duels of honor, when both instances of these honor duels ended with people just being like, eh, we're just gonna ignore, we're just gonna ignore the, the results of that. I did not, I, I do not like it when people go back on like honor duel type things. But the, the, way, the one at the end with um, Einar and how he wins, but then Bjorn, the horrible, horrible person, the betrayer came Screw along. Screw your yeah. Um, so we'll talk about, we'll talk about that one last. And do we have any, any other things to say about Orca? Like, um, any of her, any of her, uh, uh, storyline? I mean, hers was mostly just trying to track down. Her son. A lot of it was traveling. Um. Yeah. And murdering. Yeah. Uh, and definitely, I mean, I feel as though there's going to have to be a continuation on that plot into the next book because she yeah. still hasn't found her son. So she's still going to be searching for him. Uh, do you think he's he's with uh, you think he's with uh, the ones at the at the tree, right? I mean, that would be the logical place for him. Yeah, but based on John Gwynn, he's going to maybe he'll throw in a curveball and he's not going to be there at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the dude with the snotty nose, Gladier or whatever. Oh. Zainab has said that they never refer to Skull Splitter as he. So. There seems to be some debate on the heinous. But I thought the Bloodsworn specifically said it was uh, Glornir's brother. And that is why I'm... I would have to look back at the chapter. Yeah. Like I read it today, as I said. Um, I'll look back at the chapter when we're talking about something else. But for now, um, the uh, I did not realize that... Uh, the guy she's chasing, Drecker, was one of the Raven guys till the end, like one of the the Raven feeders or whatever. Mm. All of the, I don't know why I didn't connect the two kidnapping people. Like, why are there two organizations kidnapping children? I just didn't connect it till the end, like a fool. Um, I this is what I'm hoping for, Sam. Do you think that? Um, the Varg and Orca storylines are going to be combined in the next book. I mean, well, they've met. Yeah. At the end. So you, I mean, I'd think that they would be in similar locations, especially yeah. in the beginning of it. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be like the faithful and the fallen ones where they're in the same band and they're just, it'll just, 
go back back and forth between their yeah. perspectives. Um, because uh, because yeah, I, like I hope that they're united. Like I was wondering how he was going to tie all of these three together. I was thinking about that as well because they are quite disparate. Yeah, the majority of the book. But then as everyone kept heading north, I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So we're going to meet. And there's – um. so let's talk about Evnar. What were your thoughts about Evnar's plot and then the huge, like, big stuff at the end? Well, with Elvar and Agnar. Yeah. And... Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I really liked Elvar pretty much from the beginning – um, I know a lot of people say that it takes a while to get used to her, but I, I quite liked her. And I really liked when she had the scene with the talking uh, head thing. Yes! That Crodor or whatever, he's my favourite. I love that guy. <laughs> and, like, the cryptic message that he gave to her um, and, like, how she's trying to battle in herself with what her father's offering her with also wanting to seek her own battle fame. And I was like hoping that she would just go off by herself. Well, like, go off with the battle grim. I'm like, go, go, don't stay. Your father's a trick. He's going to trick you. Yeah. Um, so I liked that, and I liked her band. Uh, originally, I liked her and Bjorn together. I was like, oh, a romance, how cute. Um, and I didn't trust the instincts of uh, what was her mentor, Gren. Begins with a G, too many G names. The mentor. Oh, he, 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 how much John Gwynn told me that the Grand. mentor, Grand, didn't like him. I was like, oh, but they're just cute. They're just, it's just a young love. They're, at the end, I was like, oh, dear, my instincts were wrong there. The young I love know, was nice. not young love. I did not predict it at all. Cheyenne saying that she predicted it. I did not. I No. no. I literally when had to read that part happened, again. So did I. I had to read it again. When that happened, I was like, What's going on? Yeah. No, no. What happened here? I know. Um, the talking head reminded the Easter Island head. Those of you uh, who grew up in my era in America, I just was mm -hmm. thinking of Olmec from Legends of the Hidden Temple. That's all I was thinking of. Um, God of War. I also got God of War because uh, I know we know John Gwen's played God of War when Orca goes and like after Thorkel dies and like unearths her chest with all of her armor and stuff. That's very God of War. That happens in that game also. Um, but yeah, I did not predict Bjor's betrayal at all, Abby. I had to read it a second time. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, that didn't didn't like it. The the scene with the worms crawling into people's bodies the night worms were disgusting i that would that's like scenes from my nightmares oh my gosh yeah like when like they just wake up and they're all covered with like i i liked this further progression into the the godlands where just like the earth is just filled with these just creatures that are you know the further north you get here there be monsters type thing. Yeah. You know, and then they're about to cross the ice bridge and the freaking thuns or thun thunners, thunnels or whatever, the teeth oh, demons. Oh yeah, that. I mean, and the thing is, that's why I trusted Bjorn because he came, he went back for her. Yeah, and yeah. for Greg. Like he, I was like, he's a trustworthy character. He's doing these things. But then obviously not. Yeah, I but I mean he tries to get. I think because he does try to get Evnar, Ev, Evnar, right? Is that her name? Elnar, Elnar. Elvar and Agnar. Elvar. I cannot get these people's name. El, Elvar. Bar. He tries to get Elvar to, to join their side. So he wanted I, to find her. Yeah. So I think he did, you know, like her. But um, uh, James X. Lilly here agreeing with you, liking Elvar from the beginning when they're killing the pendulous testicular troll um albert like uh, a veteran of the red rising series falling for the betrayal here uh i agree tons of monsters in her chapters um ariel didn't trust bjorn bjor sorry um he was a little overprotective I didn't think he was creepy. I just thought he was a mentor 
friend. Yeah. Oh, the nightworms. Everyone hated the nightworms. So gross. Ugh. Um, Angela was not surprised. I was surprised. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we said that, Albert. Um, and then Lisa saw the betrayal coming. I have no idea. I'm not certain it's anybody. I think Orbit is just like, there's a dragon in this book. So... I was thinking that this person could have been the uh, one of the gatekeepers. So you know where they have this, so the the griefer comes back to life, and she was guarded by those three female warriors or whatever. I thought yeah. that was one of them, one but of them that was battling the griefer. This figure doesn't have any wings, though. So, I mean, maybe they're just very small wings, <laughs> or like. <laughs> It's possible. Okay, so there is so much debate in the in the comments, Abby, over who freaking Skull Splitter is. We're gonna need to literally uh, message find, John Gwynn and be like, "Hey, so we're confused. Is Orca?" Part of me thinks that it's his that you automatically assume that it's male and that it's Thorkel, and the twist is that it's Orca, but we haven't realized that yet, and I don't know if that's gonna happen in the next book. I'm, or I'm literally it's... going to message him right now and, and be like, John Gwynn, we're all very confused. <laughs> so. We all have questions. But the, the, that's why I, I don't know if it's something that's going to come out in the next books or if it's just us being slightly confused. I mean, because it is possible that his brother and the leader are two different things. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Well, We'll figure it out. We'll 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 message we'll message uh, John Gwynn together and figure we'll it out. The intel. Yeah. So the dragon being released at the end, and it's all nasty and white. First of all, it doesn't even look like this. This is not what Leek Fear looks like. She's white and covered in like pus and like nasty scabrous grossness. But it was weird how Leek Reaver could be the dragon, but could also be female person shaped. Yeah, but like hugely tall, also with weeping sores. Nasty. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but, um. So the dragon part at the end was just like. I mean, I sort of knew. I was like, okay, they're there. They know the dragon's there. Something's going to happen to get the dragon released. You knew it's building to yeah. something. And so you're like. It wasn't so much of a surprise having the dragon be released. I mean, I'm definitely interested in seeing where it's going to go in book two and seeing what's going to happen with what the what's going to happen to the world, knowing that there are these gods that are now alive or this god that is these gods that they all thought were dead is actually living. Yeah. No, I I, I agree. Like, but are any of the other ones living? Because I mean, again, we've seen the bones of a, of a ton of them. Um, so I just, like, I just don't know. And that, that brings me to the, the last thing I want to talk about here with everybody is there are a lot of threads that are not wrapped up in this. In fact, mm -hmm. most threads are not wrapped up. Varg wraps up with him just accepting being a blood sworn. Uh, Evnar? Is that Elvar. <laughs> Elvar. It's like you would call it Evnis or something. <laughs> yes, I'm thinking of Evnis. Elvar. Um, Elvar is, uh, I don't know, dealing with the fact that... Dealing with the repercussions of Agnar being killed by Bjor and... Correct. Yeah, and the, the Battle Grim being just completely, like, headless and dealing with uh, Raven Feeders and stuff. And then Orca is now you, with Varg and them. But there's a lot of stuff, like... Um, Elvar's dad, uh, that that Jarl, uh, Queen Helka, mm -hmm. um, you know, Orca's kid. Um, yeah, and what's going to be happening to the children now? Like, obviously, they they needed the children to perform this ritual to get Leek Reefer free. But what does this mean for the children now? Like, do the children have a purpose? Like, what is their plan for the children? Yeah, and why? And why did they? Why did they need the children to do this? Um, mm. Also, Skulk. What is Skulk doing with Vol uh, uh, and um, 
or is he dead now? Like, did Orca just? Yeah, like, I, I, sorry, I, I was distracted by your point of like, why did they have to use children? Like, why couldn't they use full adult? Uh, yeah, tainted? I have no idea. Because it's not so, as though they killed the children. No, because if just, it was just for the blood, then or then why couldn't they use adults? Yeah, exactly. So I think we'll find out more about that. We'll probably find out more about the dragon cult because everyone's like, yeah, there's no dragon, there's no dragon tainted, and then and there's dragon tainted yeah. freaking everywhere. Um, so Pete thinks the rat God is living and that's true. I think, didn't they, I think the lore said that for his betrayal, Orna, the Eagle trapped him with like poison going over him all the time or something. So he may be alive. Um, there's a lot and of people arguing. More gods that just came kept up kept on coming up but yeah i wouldn't be surprised if we found there were more yeah um so who do you think will take over the battle grim do you think it'll be um elvar i feel like they i don't know if they have a a necessary leader now that agnar is dead like if they have a if there is someone that's going to take on that mantle or if it's going to dis not disband, but like have various people trying to claim ownership of it and claim a path for them to go down. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like they're going to be, they might have different paths that they want to go down. Um, yeah. And so there might be infighting between them potentially with Elvog saying, I want to do this. And then there might be other factions potentially. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, the 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 fat guy who was uh, chained down by the vines the whole time, he was he was like Ag. Now, what's the leader's name? Oh my god, Agnar. Agnar is that? Yeah, he was like Agnar's second in command. So, mm -hmm. or he was always with Agnar or whatever. He was the one who um, gave all the orders on the ship for the rowers and everything. So who knows if he'll like try to snag um, leadership or whatever, mm. but he was unpleasant. Yeah. So do you have any other predictions, Abby? You got any other predictions for the next I, book? I mean, I'm scared for who might die because I know that John Gwynn, if you don't know, he can kill off his main POV characters. So I feel as though we could have a death. And generally, he might swap in another POV to replace that. So whether we end up with, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know, like, if Elva dies and Grend takes over as the POV. Like, generally, he has a, he still he keeps to the same number of perspectives. Yeah. So I feel like we could build to a death of one yeah. of the characters. Uh, I don't know who that could be, um, whether that's, potentially Orca's death and we end up with a replacement with her son having a POV. Mm -hmm. um, like maybe Orca saves him and in this, in and whilst doing that kills herself. Uh, I feel as though Elvar is going to have a, maybe a bigger role. Like I quite liked her, but I feel as though that she might have a bigger place or like, I don't know. I feel like she's more of a chosen one potentially. Yeah. Well, uh, and interesting to see where Leek Reefer comes in. Where? Like, is oh, Leek yeah. Reefer, the, 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 the dragon, sorry. We don't necessarily know the motives of the gods or what the motive of Leek Reefer is. Mm -hmm. Like, we know that we're, all those perspectives that we followed, we've quite liked them and the ravens or whatever, that they were the bad, they were stealing the children. Uh, but we don't know what the motive of Leek Reefer is. And, like, is she going to necessarily be good or bad or what their motive is? And also what the motives of the people from the South are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the whole Southern continent with the prince being there. What's the point of that? You're 100%. But I do think there's going to be a schism in the Battlegrim because there are four of them who are still sworn to go find uh, Uspa's son. Yes. Uh, to free him. But the rest of them aren't. And now that Agnar's dead, they might not be as, uh, you know, as keen to go do that. Especially um, as they've already reached the destination. Correct. 
a uh, hot take here with um uh it's not actually a hot take but it's like it's a good point the battle grim are slavers like like Bior says i mean they are kind of glorified slavers uh the problem is is they're set up to be the protagonists of that particular story so i think that's a tricky thing when you're following a pav you Correct. automatically grow attachments to it and have more positive thoughts to it as opposed to if you're reading them from another person's perspective yeah like i wonder what our thoughts would be on the battle room if we were reading from the raven's perspective yeah um oh yeah the the fact that uh uspa and vol oh yeah um i liked that twist yeah and vol is uh was it vol the satyr witch um, is that the one that's her sister mm -hmm. that that's glor glor glornir's wife right. yeah. so yeah like everyone is connected in this so i can't wait for the convergence and i can't i, wait I like how spell. when they said they were like my sister's been missing or my sister's been away and i was like oh sisters yeah yeah vol's the wife of glornir yeah so I am super excited to see where the second book goes. I think there was a ton of setup in this, especially mm. when they're, you know, like you said, they're just, they're so disparate. Like they're so scattered. Um, I think I've said this to you before, Alan, but like for me, I'd say that John Gwynn is obviously, we, a lot of us like this. I mean, there's loads of people that gave this five stars, but for me personally, I think that John Gwynn's strengths are in his continuations and his, in his finales, having read his other series the, gotcha. the first book, or like Malice, I really, really liked. I thought it was good. And then the, I guess like the third and the fourth book, so Wrath was really, really strong. And the same with Of Blood and Bone, like the continuations in the final book is where he really like packs his punches. Gotcha. Um, Angela, like I didn't think of that either, where or both Orcas, yeah, Glornir, both of Glornir's nephews are taken. Orca's son and Uspa's son are both they're everyone's related. So I'm so excited to see how he continues it. Like I like I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I um, you know, I gave this four stars because I did I did like it. I didn't I didn't love it the way I love um the Faithful and the Fallen books, but I think that's just because so much is being set up and they were scattered for so long mm -hmm. and and just the sheer difficulty I had with keeping the Bloodsworn and the Battlegrim straight. I so, think I will have to reread before I get to the second book. Almost certainly. <laughs> almost certainly. But he's finished with it. I mean, the draft, first draft is done. It should be yeah. out next year, right? Yeah. Um, I because I his, believe his, he said that, um, his sons have said that they've read it. So Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. That makes me exciting. Um, I don't know, Sam. Is it? I didn't. I didn't read. July, uh, July was the malice. Um, Steve, that's I think it's next year because he has finished his first draft of uh, the second book. So, but yeah, I'm super excited to read the next one. Um, I'm going to guys. I'm going to message John Gwynn because there's there's still uh, a chat in the uh, comments in the chat about which one is Skull Splitter, if it's Orca or if it's. Uh, if it's Thorkel, I'm going to message him and we'll settle it for good or ill. If he says, if he shrugs at me, if he shrugs at me, I'm going to challenge him to a duel. Uh, I'm going to challenge <laughs> him to a, to a, um, a, uh, a yes, a horn ganga. I'm going to challenge him to a horn ganga. And then even if I lose, I can dishonorably, you know, him? Fight him. I wouldn't want to kill him because I want to know what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I'm not going to kill him. I'm not going to, I'm not going to threaten to kill John Gwynn on the internet. <laughs> That's terrible. I love John Gwynn. He's so nice. I would not lose. That's not true. I would bite him. You, you'd lose. I, I think you'd, I mean, you've not got any practice. Like, John Doesn't Gwynn. Doesn't matter. Who... They would call me, they would call me Alan Gwynnbiter. <laughs> they would call me. Um, what, are you going after Varg? Are you going to go for his ankles? <laughs> yes, yes. I will, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, oh, Roy thinks he's going to give me a raffo. We'll see. Um, yeah, I could, I could see that, but then that makes you really think that it's Orca. That's like, true. If it's, yeah, that's true. If you get yeah, if he gives a Raffo, it's Orca. So any answer is as good as um, because otherwise there's no real reason to not say Thorkel. You're right. So any we're gonna get him. We're gonna trap him, Abby. We're gonna trap him in an answer. 
And I like Steve's interesting how he wants to reread it. I want to read each POV in sequence. So read all of Orca. That would be quite. So a you cool. don't have to jump around like so it doesn't confuse yeah. your brain space. I might do that for a reread as well. That's actually a good idea. So anyway, we'll see. Um, well, Abby, thank you so much for for tolerating my really late read of this and for talking about this. Uh, you're the Gwen aficionado up in oh, here. Yeah. So I'm. Uh, I'll happily take that uh, title. Yeah, it's oh man, I'm hoping to read Blood and Bone soon so I can also join you um, with all of the Gwyn ranks. Um, guys, everyone in the comments, thank you so much for. Uh, I'm just going to stop saying brain space and start saying thought cage if I can remember just to do it. Into your everyday vocabulary. Well, if I get it into if I get into a habit, I will, and people will start being like, "Why are you saying that?" And I'll just be like. It's my soul cage. Reason, the same reason I say 10 guineas to a bent hat pen. It's a real phrase. So I just need to get in the habit of saying thought cage. Um, so remind me. Um, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Guys, thank you so much for your, your thoughts here and, um, uh, you know, everything that uh, you guys have to say. Some You guys have so many good, like, ideas and opinions and everything, except for this one. This is a hot take, a bad take, because I would definitely beat John Gwynn um, in a duel. I, I have a katana. I'm trained in classic samurai style. So I don't know what to tell you there. Um, but yes, guys, do not forget this month, um, the, the book is Dark Matter. It is very short and a, many, many people read it in a day or two days max. Um, but maybe don't leave it until the day, Alan. I'm reading, I'm literally starting it today, Abby. I'm reading it now. I am not, and then I'm reading Dark Matter or Dark Age because I'm not going to get stuck here with my pants down again. I'm not going to do it. So um, I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely going to read it, uh, read it next. So guys, it'll be Leslie from the Nerd Ignary of joining me um, at the end of this month for dark matter. Uh, so yeah. Um, thank you Abby, for having me, Alan. Abby, thank you so much for the first jesse uh shelf space thing. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm not Jesse, but hopefully you guys had a good time anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, stay tuned for Dark Matter in uh, this month. And then The Wolf by Leo Carew with Leanna's Library in July. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your day. I'm going to go nap because I've been up early reading 300 pages of Shadow of the Gods. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. And subscribe to Abby if you're not, you fools. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Thank you.